Hey guys, welcome back. Nowadays, there are tons of YouTubers and Instagram content creators who say that they can teach you how to sound more like a native English speaker. Sound like a native speaker. Sound like a native speaker. Sound like a native speaker. But sound like a native speaker. By sound like a native speaker. You sound like a native speaker. Let us sound like a native speaker. You but what exactly does a native English speaker sound like? Let's watch some clips. All of these speakers are native English speakers. The fact of just like, like in like talking stages and it's just like you're like labeled that and it's like people like are considered like you can't like, you're just like confused and like most of the time like the girl get, gets like attached or something. Uh, instead, I think the fundamental rule that drives our decision is more that of fairness. In other words, um, treating people equally. You know what I'm saying? It's like anywhere we go, we shut the shit down. It don't matter. Like, man, then we'll have to get drawn in the white chalk. I would dispute that it's a fringe theory if we're saying that it's so mainstream that it's infiltrating every sector of public life. I think we can't we can't simultaneously dismiss it as fringe and then say it's permeating every every area of the public sphere. I, th I think you'd concede that point. So as you guys can tell, there is a whole range of native English speakers. Some native English speakers talk very informally and some native English speakers use very complex vocabulary and a high level of language. However, even though they sound completely different, they are all native English speakers. So an important question to consider when you are learning English, and especially as your proficiency gets better and better, is what type of native English speaker do you want to sound like? Do you want to sound like the first group? Or do you want to sound more like the second group? Now, I've posted tons of short videos on my Instagram page and on my YouTube channel, and I've taught you guys a lot of complex or advanced vocabulary. So many of you guys appreciate my quizzes. Some of you always leave comments and you ask me, how common are these words and how frequently can you hear them in everyday conversation? Now, something you should consider is, what types of people are you engaging with on a daily basis. Chances are you're talking to people who are from a small group. So chances are a lot of these words are not common. However, if you're watching TV shows or movies, or if you read, you will be exposed to this vocabulary. So these words are important and they are useful to learn even if you don't hear them in everyday conversation. The truth is, just because you don't encounter them on a daily basis does not mean that they are words that native English speakers do not use. Native English speakers may sound different from each other based on their education level, their interests, and the context in which they are speaking. So with all of that being said, what I'm going to teach you guys in this video are some advanced phrases that native English speakers use, and these native English speakers belong more to the second group of people that I've shown in the clips. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys several phrases that you can use if you want to sound more like a native English speaker and specifically a type of native English speaker who is educated. Now, being educated or being intelligent doesn't necessarily mean that you're a better person than someone else. That's not at all what I'm suggesting. You can choose to speak informally and use a lot of slang and speak casually and there's nothing wrong with that but this video is for my viewers who are interested in elevating their language and using more complex expressions in order to sound like they are someone who reads and they are someone who is interested in expanding their vocabulary and sounding more educated so with that being said let's get to it the first expression that you can use to sound more like an educated native English speaker is the phrase in and of itself. In and of itself is a phrase that means by itself or on its own or without considering anything else. Now, let me give you an example and show you how you could use this expression. You could say something like Learning to play a musical instrument is rewarding in and of itself. And the ability to make money from your talent is an added bonus. So in this example sentence, I am expressing that the experience of learning to play an instrument is rewarding by itself without considering any other factors. 
So in this sentence, I'm expressing that if you can make money from being a talented musician, that's awesome. But even if you don't make any money, the experience of learning to play is rewarding. You don't need any other things to happen in order for this experience to be rewarding. In and of itself, learning to play a musical instrument is rewarding. And which, which also makes sense in, the con in this idea of um, the, the ways in which a sound can carry so much information in and of itself, the way a sound carries a politic. Right. This sort of concept in and of itself is basically becoming less and less relevant. And I think the title of the book is, uh, it's in and of itself, it's a microcosm of the book. The second expression that you could use is lack thereof. Now this one sounds kind of weird. Lack thereof is an expression that means the absence of something that has previously been mentioned. Now let me give you guys an example of lack thereof. Let's say you are attending a motivational speech and the speaker is talking about the role of motivation in achieving success. The speaker may say something like, in this speech, I am going to talk about how motivation or lack thereof can impact one's future success. So lack thereof here in this sentence means the absence of motivation. Now you can use the expression lack thereof if you want to emphasize that the absence of something or the presence of something plays a big part in the outcome of a situation. So in this example, having motivation has a significant impact and lacking motivation also has a significant impact. You have ballot access considerations, debate stage opportunities or lack thereof I mean, against the position of government intervention or lack thereof. And even that wasn't scratched because you had a family and they had a certain set of opportunities or lack thereof. So in a sense, we're constantly inheriting these eight lap relay races. But the third expression that you could use is per se. Per se is a Latin term. It means by itself or in itself. You can use the expression per se when you want to emphasize that something is considered by itself or on its own. Let me give you an example sentence. So if you're redecorating your living room, you may talk to your interior designer and you may complain about some of the color choices and you could say something like, the color of the couch isn't the issue per se, Rather, it's the way it clashes with the color of the walls. So in this sentence, you can use per se to express that I don't dislike the color of the couch, the red color of the couch, but I don't enjoy the way it looks when it's paired with the color of the walls. It isn't about the rocks or even the traps per se. It is about the system that those traps created. A work of art isn't always an expression per se. Sometimes it's the articulation of an idea. The fourth and final expression that I'm going to teach you today is in any event. In any event is an expression that means regardless of the outcome or regardless of what happens or anyway. You can use the expression in any event when you want to talk about something that is going to happen regardless of the circumstances. Let me give you a sample sentence. You could say the weather is unpredictable, but in any event, the wedding ceremony will take place rain or shine. In this sentence, I am using the phrase in any event to express that no matter what happens with the weather, regardless of if it is sunny or if it's raining, the wedding ceremony will take place. In any event, the wedding ceremony will take place. I think it took place in a mental institution, but in any event, I enjoyed it enormously. As opposed to the constitution itself. In any event, I, I'm, I'm thinking of something different. Talk about your own personal predilections about things. Um, but in any event, we spent a very long time constructing a case and filed the case under the Massachusetts constitution. So that's everything, you guys. There are four advanced phrases that you can use to sound more like a native English speaker who is educated or someone who is interested in speaking with advanced phrases. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did, please don't forget to hit the like button and leave a comment below to let me know if you enjoyed this video. 
Also, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you can get notified about my new content. As you guys know, I post a video every single week and it's a ton of work, but I'm really enjoying reading the feedback that you guys leave me. So please continue to leave comments and please continue to watch my videos uh, and help me to stay motivated to keep pumping out English language learning content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next week.